welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about not to like, was it not to take life too seriously, or you'll never make it out alive. Now, I don't know if I see a lot of people watching this know that reference, but it's to Van Wilder. And uh, again, I'm just kind of using that as just a basic principle of the concept what I'm talking about. But pretty much, I'm talking about what's helped me, um, I say, kind of combat uh, and cope with, um, say, the tragedy of life and just the the, the pain that inevitably will take place and some of us go through more pain than other others but uh but ultimately at least what helped has helped me is just having a good sense of humor um you know i say a lot of people that know me know i have a very dry sense of humor and and say one of the reasons that i i believe that i have that and that i i just feel that that that, I, that pain resi- not that pain that sense of humor resonates with me of having a dry sense of humor is the fact that you know it's that whole i'd rather laugh than cry and, you know, if I can laugh at something that, that's, you know, in and of itself a, a very sad reality, um, yeah, it's just something where I'm like, I'm not denying its existence, um, but I'm actually turning it and changing it in a way to where I can laugh about it, where I can be uplifted about something that's negative. Um, and again, it's not something, it's not something that, you know, I never personally would, would find humor in something that's extremely... Um, personal you know it's something where you know i think more the subject in, in making fun of the subject is humorous um you know so you know when tragedy strikes like one of the, the movies i liked growing up as a kid uh was uh, monty python in search for the holy grail and in it yeah so there's some pretty horrible things that, that happen uh but they just they try to make light of it you know they make light of the black plague they make light of there's a point where one of the the main characters uh, sir lancelot comes through and, and he misinterprets what's happening he thinks there's this damsel in distress and he ends up I think butchering like half of this wedding party and their families and such um thinking that, that there's this that they're part of some sort of tyrannical horrible institution that this this uh this uh, maiden in uh in distress is, is victim to um then he ends up realizing what's actually going on but it's just kind of you know there's a point where he's apologizing you know sorry about that and <laughs> It's just, it's, to me, I find it hilarious and funny because it's so absurd to, to try to brush something off like that. You just, you know, slaughtered a, a bunch of innocent people and he's just kind of like, ah, sorry about that. So for myself, it just, it makes me laugh because it's absurd to think that simply slightly apologizing and saying my bad. You know, you say you're bad if you actually grab the, the you know, the wrong meal if you're, if you're picking up delivery or something like my You know, that's a, a minor inconvenience. That's what you... That's how you apologize. You don't apologize when you accidentally kill somebody um, who was innocent. Um, so again, I find I, I find humor in that. And again, it's just more because I like to look at things that way. I like to laugh at how absurd um, that type of behavior is. You know, I think a lot of times, like one of my favorite comedians is Dave Chappelle, and he does a lot of that type of comedy where he's making fun of real horrible things, um, but just he does it in such an absurd way that it's funny. And again, that just it helps me. Um, you know, luck of life that way. When when life's got me down, a lot of times I do try to have that apply that dry sense of humor to something that's happened to me, and uh, and yeah, just like laugh it off, um, because uh, yeah, just it makes life easier to deal with. It makes it more carefree. Um, so again, I don't think that we should always apply that. I do think it's really important to, as I've discussed, look at your pain, look at the the reality, the totality of it, and identify, you know, the fallout and the source of that. That decay in your life um, so that you can understand it and you know what you need to do and where you need to do it when it comes to healing um, but at the same hand you can't constantly look at, at life's problems that way and it's, you, you won't make it out alive you look at so much negativity in this world and I'm not saying to, to look the other way and to act like it's not there um, but it is really important not to just 365 it not to, to every second of that your waking moment you're just dwelling on how, how horrible life is and how much pain there is it's you're not going to be healthy mentally. Um, you're just going to be deteriorated and you're going to feel hopeless because there is so much to be done. There's so much healing that we need to do. And if you focus on every aspect of it, if you focus on the totality of it, you will. You, you'll mentally just feel that there's there's no point in trying because you'll, there'll, there'll never be enough. There isn't enough time in the day to solve all this pain. And so... For myself, that's why I use humor, is I use humor so that I can maintain, you know, a, a level head amongst so much pain, and I can focus on what we can do to change it, what we can do to heal it, um, because I've, I've realized, because I spent so many of my years um, 
feeling hopeless, feeling like there's no point in, in trying to, to solve all the problems that I had and all the problems that I see in the world because it just seems endless. And that's one thing I've realized is that you just got to do what you can. You got to, you got to, you know, obviously keep trying. You got to keep trying to move forward. You got to keep trying to heal every aspect of, of your pain and just move from, let's say, subject to subject to subject um, and even just in you know, integral parts of those subjects. It might, you know, just, just me dealing with just with the loss of my twin brother as an aspect that I need to deal with. I can't deal with the loss of my twin brother, what my dad did to my sister, um, just the financial screen over that's happened in my life um, and every integral thing. I can't look at every aspect at the same time. I have to, to look at it individually and try to feel heal that chapter, try to heal that, that page of my life rather than looking at the entire encyclopedia of pain that, that it is out in the world. And being like, how in the world are we going to, you know, just, it's really, you got to do what you got to do. You got to look at what works. And, and so for like example, like with uh, like physical conditioning, I remember years ago, and it's something that I do want to get back into, but for years and years, I was a pretty adamant, um, uh, I would say athlete. I, I worked out a lot. I was in, in really good shape physically um, and athletically. Um, but that's one thing I realized when I when I applied that to my life was I looked at it like I, I can't look at how am I doing in a week, how am I doing in a month, how am I doing in six. I really told myself, give myself a year. And again, this is I, I'm not going to do some crazy. I'm working out two, three hours a day. I eat thousand calories. Like I don't. I knew I had to make realistic adjustments, and that over time I would see the change. I would see the progress of, of changing the direction of my life. And the same thing with mentality. The same with with your mental health and depression. You can't look at it like it's a sprint. You gotta look like it's like it's a full length marathon, not the twenty some miles, or whatever, like the full length that's one hundred and forty four miles or some craziness. But you gotta look at it like I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get to that tree that's a half mile down. All right, I'm gonna get to that that barn that's another mile and a half. I'm gonna get to and just have these milestones of progression where you just keep focusing on moving forward with the problem. You don't let it overwhelm you. You don't think, holy cow, I still have one hundred and forty two miles to go. I still have. You can't look at it that way. You won't get it out alive. You won't have the mentality uh, to overcome it. Um, and you really got to break it down. And again, too, so like, and it, not everyone, you know, I realized that, that not everyone has a, a dry sense of humor. That was one of my favorite uh, summaries of explaining the concept of a dry sense of humor. As it said, you know, a, a dark sense of humor is a lot like money. Not everyone gets it. And I thought that was a perfect a perfect way of summarizing it because it's like, well, we all understand that concept. I don't always have a bunch of money. And so I realized that, that there are times when I'll be laughing at something or I'll make a joke or whatever. Not everyone in the room gets it and they might think that I'm kind of a sick or I'm, that I'm insensitive or something. And I'm just saying that's how I cope. That's how I look at the world and it doesn't get the better of me. I don't feel overwhelmed by it. But again, too, I think it's really important for individuals to self-reflect and to realize that, to realize you know, I don't have a dry sense of humor. And so this person does. So when they're saying these insensitive things to me, they're not actually meaning it in the way that I'm interpreting it in my perspective. Because in their perspective, it's just a coping mechanism. It's just something that lightens their heart. And so, you know, when I'm talking about this, I, I realize that not everyone's going to have this approach. Um, but at the same hand, it's more just, I'm using an example of what helps me and why it helps me. Hoping that other people will self-reflect and see what might help them. You know, some people might uh, feel the benefit from immersing themselves in sad stories and, and letting the tears run. And that, that that's how they decompress. That's how they look at pain and they don't feel as overwhelmed by it. But that's one of the things that I, I'm just trying to encourage people to do is to self-reflect and see what brings you up and brings you down. And to make sure that there's a balance there. You can't just, you can't 365 it with depression and, it, or not depression, but with depressive aspects you can't just look at, at the, the, the at just the, the horrible pain that's out there all the time because it maybe to me it's just going to overwhelm you you do have to figure out uh, um, what lifts you up what makes you feel good you know if maybe volunteering uh, with, in your community will, will lift your heart up and will counteract the negativity because you'll feel like you're doing something and being active you know maybe you know volunteering with uh, counseling with with being a big brother big sister those type of things will make you uplifted and bring your heart up and, and, and remind you that there are people out there actively trying to invoke change and heal. Um, and so again, it's just uh, being cognitive, cognitive of, uh, of, of the pain and then what you can do to heal it. 
not simply doing one or the other. It's really important, um, again, too, like I said, because I'm sure there are people who are actively helping. Um, but if, if every time a story comes up about something bad happening, you just change the channel, you turn it off, whatever. If every time you're doing that, again, there is a point of, of you know, I, I understand the desire to not, again, to not be immersed in a constant flow of negativity, but at the same hand, um, you know, I think the reason why uh, things have gone on so long is that sense of, of just not wanting to see it, of not wanting to acknowledge uh, the decay in other people's lives and the, and the decay in our own. As many times we just, we flip to the next page. When, once we make eye contact with that, that negativity, you know, again, say from Seattle, there's that one clip that every Seattle fan can, can testify that we're tired of seeing. It's the past. Um, but at the same hand, um, I'm sure that the, that the, the, the players on that team, that they, they want to combat it. Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll want to move on beyond that. So they do have to dissect and realize what led to that point. What could we have done differently? Um, so there's a, a certain level of accepting uh, the mistake, and then there's also a certain level of uh, identifying uh, painful events. But at the same hand, there's also a point where we need to move on from that and, and look at what we can do to combat it and not just simply look at the, at the, the broken leg, look at the, the gunshot wound or whatever. We need to figure out how do we stop it, how do we heal it. Because um, if you're just looking at the pain itself and that's all you do, um, I could I completely see why a lot of people are suicidal. A lot of people... Um, don't don't feel like the world has any hope and and so again it's about identifying why we're in that state rather than just saying it's broken it, it'll always be broken and it's like well not to be too simplistic but that's one of the reasons why a lot of systems don't get fixed is that we just accept the fact that they're broken and then we throw our arms up saying that there's just it's just the way it is um you know and it's just like well that's why things continue is because um i want to say we accept it it's not like we're endorsing it um but I think that that's, you know, again, if you look at how many times, you know, what changed when we progressed, what changed, um, you know, with the basis of the revolution or what changed was the fact that people looked at things and said, no, this isn't right. When uh, slavery was abolished, again, people looked at things and said, no, this isn't right. We need to do something. So every time there's been a dramatic change uh, for the better of humans, it's always been because people didn't accept and continue to accept um, what was wrong. They decided to take action and apply it. Uh, but again, too, it's just something where in order for us to have the mental health so we can invoke change, that we can and heal ourselves and heal others, we need to look at the pain and we also need to look at what helps the pain. We can't just do one or the other. We need a balance of both. And so hopefully um, as, as people watch this video and, and, and you know, review their own, own mental health and what they can do, hopefully they can find their, what their coping mechanism, whether it's a humor like me or, or, or um, again, volunteering or whatever, whatever their niche is, whatever feeds their soul. Um, I hope that we can all get there. Uh, but as always, good luck. Good night.